people, Toto? What do you think? Do you think we'll get through it? Oh, yeah. Can we go to the fun bit? No, we have to do the boring bit first. Is that okay? Some of these people don't know what the National Forum is. We've got to tell them. So, just be patient, be patient. So, the National Forum for the Enhancement of Teaching and Learning is the national body in Ireland with responsibility for leading and teaching, leading and advising on the enhancement of teaching and learning. We have four areas that we work on. They're all interrelated, but we professional development, teaching and learning in a digital world, teaching and learning within disciplines, and student success. And for us, our vision of student success is providing all students with the opportunity to fulfill their potential. And it's interesting, our icon uh, with the tree at the center showing the potential each acorn has if it is nurtured and supported, building its strength and its resilience and enabling it to grow to maturity. And that's what I think we've been hearing for the last two days. Why can't we? I think we have to answer a different question. So how can we? Anne, in her opening comments, um, talked about diversity as being the new normal. Paul mentioned the need to recognize the potential of all learners to align our education system accordingly. Frederick, in his keynote, talked about the, the, it's no longer a minority discourse. He talked about 73% of his students being impacted. What about the other 27%? I'd argue it's 100% of students that's actually impacted. So I don't agree with you, Frederick, wherever you are. <laughs> um, over the last three days, I think I've identified three themes. So the theme one is, how can we play our part by making better connections? And I love this image. It's a bridge in Vietnam. I love the fact that it's a structure, it's, it's there, it's, it's straight, you can see where you're going. But the hands, I think, capture the fact that, for me particularly, the people are really important. And over the last two days, loads of disconnects have been mentioned. Building bridges between one side of the disconnect and the other is really, we need to do that to ensure we have effective, positive and sustainable change. But you can't build a bridge from one side only. And we heard a lot about this disconnect between our levels of education. Look at that bridge. People are walking across that bridge just as they're progressing through our education system. And yet we're lined up to talk about second level students, further education and training students, higher level students. They're all the same people. They're just with us for a while as they pass through. And I think sometimes we forget that. Um, I think uh, Alana yesterday, I think the, the, what she actually spoke about, about having to start a battle a second time because she wants to continue her study as a postgraduate. Even within our institutions, we don't have the connections that we need. 
there's a disconnect at system levels. The, the workshop from Trinity College yesterday. Students with mental health problems want to take time out. The institution can enable them to have the time out, but the financial systems don't always enable them to do it. There are silos within our institutions. And we have, yes, you have uh, reasonable accommodations on one side, and then you have a barrier of an administrative load to go and do it on the other side. Um, there's the disconnect that uh, Fre Frederick talked about language. The language you use pigeonholes us into, rule, into roles. You're the disability officer. You're the student support. You're the academic. Um, but what's more important, I think, is it, it pigeonholes our, our students and classifies our students from the day that they enter our college. And I think we need to work much harder to strengthen the connection and mend those disconnections. We want our students to feel successful when they finish, not that they have survived despite the system. And many students feel that. Now I have another one to say. Yeah. OK. All right, so team two. We can play our part by being proactive rather than reactive. Um, the image I've chosen for this is that is a spaghetti junction, a motorway. There is no way in God's earth that you'd go and navigate that without having done some planning. And somebody said yesterday that transitions is a process, not an event. It has to be planned. It has to be sorted. And we need to work together and be proactive to do that. And again, going back to our student, she said that you know, she lobbied for positive change. The institution reacted, but that's the problem. They reacted. Wouldn't it have been better if they had planned in advance? Um, one of the other presentations I was at yesterday talked about the burning platform, being proactive rather than waiting for the burning platform. And, and Frederick talked about you know, a lecturer walking into a class and then trying to adapt to the need of the students. That's not, just not tenable. We need to have our learning opportunities designed before and to cater for all students and still have the flexibility at that time to do what we think is right in the moment. Students, staff, institutions, and systems need to be proactive, and they need to work together to plan ahead. Reactive approaches, they're never sustainable. I'm nearly there, just one more, okay? One more. So our third one, and final one, so don't worry, is we can play our part by keeping people at the center of what we do. So my image is a car broken down at the side of the road with a big warning sign on the approaching road and the driver is standing at the side of the road and on their phone. They can't progress. They are linking with a person to get them going again. And said that education is an emotional journey, and it's an emotional journey both for staff and for students. Because students can express fears and frustrations, and those who teach are often concerned about being exposed, being somehow found deficient, or being found somehow wanting in some way. And we need to meet people where they are, and in a non-threatening way. I think Pauling talked about it as personalization. Um, and it doesn't matter whether we're supporting our students online or we're convincing a senior manager to provide funding for infrastructure change. They're all just people. And we need to remember that. It isn't a case of the computer says no. Institutions are run by people. Systems are managed and worked with by people. Um, accredited bodies are run by people. And we have to continue to advocate for UDL but every voice makes a difference. And I really feel that if we want to make real progress, if we want to harness that voice, we have to harness the voice of our students and work with them in partnership to become advocates. And I mean all students, advocates of UDL. Their voice will make all the difference to ensuring sustainability and positive change. Yeah, it's finished. It's all right. Okay, so 
Do you want to start? Okay, is he here? Yeah. Did we go ahead? All right. Toto. Toto was very keen on having something fun. And um, so what he did was he said that he wanted everybody to sing his song. <laughs> so am I wearing my red boots? I am. Look, I'm wearing them. <laughs> Do I know what to do? I do, I do, I know what to do. When I click my boots three times, something's going to happen. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? <gasps> are you excited? Ooh. Yeah, you are. Oh, good. Hang on in there. They're just getting, they're just getting the surprise ready. Okay? All right, all right. Look, is he here? Is he here? We started. What do I have to do? All right. I have to click my heels three times and then say, Lee, come to the stage. Is that right? Okay. One, two, three. Lee, come to the stage. I'm very glad that you got the round of the applause out of the way at the beginning. <laughs> this room has grown exponentially in size over the last 10 steps. Can I tell them what Toto wanted to do? It depends what Toto wanted to do. <laughs> well, Toto, Toto just wanted to say that, that they didn't think that the words of the original version of the song were appropriate for today. So we've kind of altered them a wee bit. So what's going to happen is Lee's going to sing the song and then Toto would really like if you all would join in the second time. How's that? Okay. Right. God, God bless us, everyone. <laughs> At one side of the rainbow Skies are grey Steps and stages are stubborn systems can block the way At that side of the rainbow voices call For better understanding and UDL for all when people don't communicate or think ahead, our world is disconnected. This can be hard on students to their inner gifts, and different views don't feel respected. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that we dream of. Where over that rainbow students strive and the dreams that they dare to dream really come alive. Someday we'll wish upon a star and wake up where all students are supported. With different ways of learning things are understood and given wings we'll be transported what if over the rainbow was right here we could move that old rainbow make the grey disappear if everybody plays their part with courage, brains and open hearts then ours can Okay, Toto really loved that, but he felt the audience were only get going, so let's go. <laughs> Who's going to play? <laughs>
All the voices now. Out of one, out of two, out of one, two, three. Somewhere over the rainbow, we are. It's a land that we dream of. Please let me tell you why. Somewhere over the rainbow, it's the